Yep. All right. I guess you want to start. Yeah. Hey, the, uh... Yep. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is a special, uh, a special, uh, I, just a special. That's what it is. It's a special. Uh, joining me for this, because this was all his idea in a good way. Uh, we've said his name many times on the show. We've tried to get him on, but, you know, things didn't work out in the past. But we got him today. Steve Miller, welcome. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve. Uh, yeah, we've talked about this quite a bit in the past, but, you know, schedules and everything else, life, life kind of gets in the way sometimes. It so. really does. Uh, why don't you tell everyone about yourself uh, briefly? Uh, I'm 31. I'm from Texas. Been a lifelong wrestling fan, though over the past few years, I've kind of gotten uh, – I kind of kept track of wrestling, you know, with the online reports, mm-hmm. you know, love next and everything they're doing. But uh, I'm here to talk today about all elite wrestling, AEW. Yes, because, um, you know, when we did the show this week, the, the new episode, which you guys can check out, we were running out of time. So we really didn't get a chance, a good chance to talk about. AEW and what they've done really in 12 days and they haven't they have not run a show yet they will run a show uh, May 25th as I mentioned earlier in the week but I I, I want to ask you and, and I guess it goes back to New Year's Day did you watch the being the elite video where they made the announcement yeah, yeah, I uh, watched it for a brief minute or so, and uh, I don't really remember a whole lot about it, you know. But, now, uh, now, you weren't crazy enough to stay up all night just to watch the video. Oh, no, I, I caught it the next day. <laughs> okay, good. I, I I didn't stay up, but I, was, I got sick that night, so that's how I found out. Oh. But I'm all good. Um, so, you know what's real, what's interesting? It, it seems like on a daily basis, day after day after day, is how we keep getting these different reports about All Elite Wrestling. There's so much going on. Right. And the big thing was the pep rally that they had earlier this week. hmm And I thought for the most part it turned out successful. Did you get a chance to watch the pep rally? Are you talking about the one that happened in Jacksonville? Yeah. I didn't watch it. Um, I read about it. It's okay. on YouTube. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it was on YouTube. Um, I think the video is still up. I'm not really sure. But th- what they did was they had this presentation outside of the stadium where the Jacksonville Jaguars play. Um, And they had, you know, they had fireworks and they had loud music and speakers and all that. And they, you know, they did this presentation and I thought it came off good. It wasn't cheesy, which I'm thankful for because I can't really deal with cheesiness in wrestling. Um, yeah, we got enough of that from fans. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the roster that we saw, or for those who did see, they we got to see some new ones that we hadn't heard. Obviously, Cody's on the roster, the Young Bucks, Brandy, Adam Page. Uh, those were the main five, you know, the initial five. Right. Because, well, this is pretty much their company to a degree they're they they are getting help financial help uh then they announced that they're gonna have a women's division and they signed Britt baker who for those who don't know is the girlfriend of adam cole from nxt so you know he's a lucky son of a gun (laughs) And then what was really cool was we got to see some talent that we had not heard of that or, you know, that had signed. Um, Joey Janela, MJF, who both have been really doing well on the independent scene. They were there, so they're going to be on the roster. 
And then we saw Pac, a.k.a. Neville. And I thought that was really cool to see him back. Oh, it's not a surprise to see him there. Yeah. Or read about it, rather. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think the big surprise is the fact that Chris Jericho has signed with All Elite Wrestling. I think that's the big surprise out of everything. It shouldn't be a surprise, but yeah, I definitely agree with you. You know, it, that that really uh, raised the profile and got everyone's attention even more so than they already have. Mm-hmm. And after the the pep rally, and I, if you go to the if you go to Chris Jericho's Twitter account or All Elite Wrestling's Twitter account, they had the video of Jericho signing the contract for him to be a part of All Elite Wrestling. So it's official. He's a part of it now. And he said he's not doing it for the money. He's doing it to have fun. And, oh, what better way to have fun than with a new organization, really? Absolutely. Uh, The ironic part is AEW has apparently offered him far more money than he has ever made in WWE. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm glad you brought that up, Steve, because... The the people who are helping run this, like I mentioned, are the owners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're the Khan family. Um, in particular, the younger son, because they're getting financial support from both the father and the son, but it's mostly the son that's helping out. And he put in, I, I read it was $100 million into this. And, you know, $100 million, that's just chump change to them. Because <laughs> not only do they have an NFL team, but they also have a, a, a soccer team, a football team in England to, um, you know, to get their money around. And apparently the the elder Khan in the family is among, like, the 250 wealthiest people in the world, according to Forbes magazine. So... The the money's going to be okay. I'm not. I don't think they're going to be worried about money for a while. But I'm sure you have stuff that you want to bring up, and I'm going to let you have the floor because I'm interested on your thoughts on all this. Well, I wish I had known that the uh, the rally was on YouTube. I've been working a lot lately, and I didn't get a chance to catch it. I've right. been reading all the reports. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, you have the Pakistan uh, Shahid Khan and Tony Khan who mm-hmm. are backing this, and it's mainly the father who's uh, the primary financial investor, and the son is reportedly a huge wrestling fan. Yeah. You know, uh, Edge and Christian were talking about it on their podcast, how, you know, they were talking to Tony about this, uh, about wrestling and football a long time ago. And Christian was kind of making a joke that, uh, you know, he wanted to talk about football and Tony wanted to talk about wrestling and kept going back and forth. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, Tony's been watching for a long time. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not sure what – I'm sure he probably watched the Hogan era, but I'm not Mm -hmm. sure, you know. Do we know how old he is? I I can find out real quick. Yeah, because from what I read from Meltzer, because, you know, Meltzer is the everything – But no, in all seriousness, yeah, Tony has been a lifelong fan. He's actually been a subscriber for the newsletter for like 22 years, uh, is what I read when the latest Observer came out this week, so. He is 36 years old. Oh, okay, so yeah, he was around during the the Hogan era. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, he's been exposed to, uh, all the different eras, and, uh, it makes me kind of wonder uh, why he wanted to do this now. And, you know, does is he a fan of the current product of WWE or does he trying to do something different, you know, mm-hmm. to kind of make wrestling, at least in this country, a bit more interesting now? Mm-hmm. That's a good point. And that's a very good question. I, I think only he would know the answer to that question. I really do. I think Tony would know the the answer to that question. But um, they did talk about the next show, May 25th, Memorial Day weekend, in Las, Las Vegas. Yep. Las Vegas. <laughs> well, I mean, it's double or nothing, so why not have it in Las Vegas? 
What do you expect from that show? Well, I would expect by that point we're going to have almost a full roster because they're still working on getting different talents. Um, There's different wrestlers here and there that they want, men and women. Um, Because the show's four months away, so they have time. I think what they're going to focus on is getting the talent. That's got to be the main thing because they got the venue, they've got the date. Just get the talent. And just get good talent. You don't have to get former WWE wrestlers. You know, like Pac is an exception to the rule because Pac and Jericho are an exception to the rule because of how successful they've been outside of WWE. So I think the roster is going to be the main thing, the main focus for the next four months. They are, uh, they've assigned. Cody Rhodes, let me go ahead and read this. Cody Rhodes will be uh, handling the singles roster. Mm-hmm. And Matt and Nick, the Young Bucks, will be uh, doing the tag team division, which I'm excited about because I used to be a huge tag team uh, division fan. And it's kind of non-existent with WWE. Yeah. You know. And then uh, Cody's wife, Brandy, will be doing the women's division. Yeah, and she's also going to be the chief branding officer for the company. So, and she has a degree, I think in business, if I remember correctly. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So she's going to be fine on that end. Um, and you have with Brandy's education and Tony and his father all working together on that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I read a report that this was, I think from Meltzer, they have, they're in the process of establishing or working out a t- weekly primetime TV deal with two major networks. Yes. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because the main one that I have heard, or the main two, which is basically the same – basic, well, not the same station, but they're pretty much owned in the same family, is TBS and TNT. Which is kind of funny. (laughs) It is. Because if it does happen, you're bringing back, especially with TBS, a channel that for years was synonymous with professional wrestling. I mean, when Ted Turner had WCW, every weekend, Saturday, 6.05, TBS, I would watch it. And... When uh, the Time Warner deal happened with AOL, one of the first things they did was they got rid of WCW. You know, they did not want that product on their TV. And if you look at the format of both channels, TVS is basically an all-comedy channel and TNT is an all-drama channel. So if that happens, I would be very happy. I haven't heard any other stations yet, though. I don't think any uh, any other stations have been brought up online either. And you're right, you know, uh, for the longest time, TNT, they there's plenty of wrestling programming. Uh, up until, I think, the AOL merger, mm-hmm. where a bunch of executives never watched it, didn't care for it, didn't nope. want anything to do with it. Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, it's been, what, 17 years since WCW went out of business? Yep, yep. Seven, it'll be, this year will be the 18th anniversary. And uh, for me, that was kind of a, a sad day, you know, because I knew that Vince, in hindsight, you know, he kind of, uh, with every other territory, man, mm-hmm. you know, you would hope that he would have, you know, had a, uh, been able to take something from that whole thing and kind of make his product better but yeah yeah now we get a chance to have an alternative a major alternative on the major network Mm -hmm. and it makes you wonder what's going to happen to roh and oh go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead no i was going to say because apparently 
there was a meeting between All Elite, Ring of Honor, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they were going to try to have a working agreement because the Bucks and Cody, they did not leave on bad terms. Their contract just ran up with Ring of Honor, and they just decided not to, you know, resign. And, no hard feelings. Right, yeah. no, no hard feelings. And for the moment, there there's no working agreement within the three. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I mean, probably down the line it might, but you never know. Yeah, but not at that stage yet. Exactly. However, I did read a few days ago – there may be, and that's the word, maybe a working agreement with All Elite and Impact Wrestling. I did not read that more. Tell me more about it. Um, well, I mean, this just popped up like two days ago, this report. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it would be, you know, just a, like I said, just a working agreement between Impact and All Elite. And I think it would benefit both brands because with All Elite, you'd have an American promotion that you would work with. And with Impact, they'd be on a major network, you know, because they just had their first show last night on the Pursuit channel for those who have that channel. And if you don't have it, you could watch it on Twitch, which they promoted the heck out of during the pay-per-view this week. Yeah, I'm reading about it right now. There's a couple of reports online where All Elite was thinking about buying Impact Wrestling. That's a that's another new one that I had heard. I mean, not much, but yeah, I'd heard about that earlier. I think yesterday or Thursday. Tony had uh, specifically talked about how he wanted wanted his roster and his talent. Mm -hmm. well, my mom's calling me. I'll call her later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Tony was talking about how, in contrast to what Vince McMahon has been doing, where he kind of, uh, you know, didn't want anything to do with really any organization, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, WWE is the only wrestling town in the world, apparently. Mm -hmm. You know, even though he finally had Dixie Carter on the WWE Network, which is... Right. Uh, Caught me by a major surprise. I think it caught everybody by surprise. He said that he wanted partnerships with NJPW, ROH, and he's open to doing business with just about you know those organizations where Chris Jericho's contract apparently allows him, you know, when he's not busy with AEW, if he wants to go down to NJPW and do do his thing over there, he can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that probably means, just like we mentioned a moment ago with Ring of Honor, the door is still open with New Japan. Right. So that's a good thing. Um, Let me ask you something. Go ahead. Do you think that uh, Tony is pursuing this in the right way? You with mean, all the talent, you know? Um what were we going to say? No, I was going to ask you, do you mean like as a fan or as a business owner? I would say both. Let's start with business. Okay. As far as business goes, that's a tough one. Because it's almost kind of, the way what he's been doing or talking about almost seems like it's too good to be true. Right. Like it's based in reality, you know? Yeah. I think if he's going to, if it's going to work, as a business owner, he has to learn from the mistakes that WCW and TNA made, which was getting these former WWE wrestlers who were big names, bringing them in, and basically making them into a at least a double A minor league organization. Um, as a I think from a business point, he is rushing a little bit at the moment, but I think once he figures everything out, he's going to be okay, I think, from a business point. From a fan's point, 
I think he's having the time of his life right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you got some of the top talent. You got one of the greatest wrestlers of all time in Chris Jericho on your roster. You've mm-hmm. got the internet talking. You you've basically got the wrestling world by the balls right now. And <laughs> he ain't going to let go. He is not going to let go right now. With the with Chris Jericho involved, um, you know, with all that money, with the young bucks and everything, he pretty much has everything needed uh, to succeed. Mm-hmm. With the money, the connections, uh, getting a TV deal, they're filing trademarks. They're uh, Cody and the young bucks. They did all in last year, right? Which was a huge success. Yeah, and Meltzer, and it all started when I think it was Meltzer that kind of. Uh, Challenged him to do it, you know, mm-hmm. on, a, and, on, a, on a bet. Yep. And it was the first time. And I don't know. I forgot what the number is and how many years that an independent wrestling group like that. And they're not even a wrestling group. They're just all friends with connections. Right. We're able to host, successfully host a uh, an event that had over 10,000 in attendance. You know, I could tell you real quick because because they did have a pre-show as well if you Mm -hmm. remember and it was on wgn america and i had one of my nephews like he came to hang out with me and we watched some of the pre-show and he's a wrestling fan he you know he's getting into the wrestling he even enjoyed the pre-show from all in and and you know he's eight years old and he just had a fun time watching the (laughs) pre-show so if you can have the attention of an eight-year-old like that imagine what you're gonna do you know with a national or even a worldwide audience and especially the fans who are no longer in wrestling that maybe they could bring them back in hopefully Mm -hmm. you know absolutely but one thing that I might be kind of worried about is hopefully Tony doesn't get in over his head mm. after the first year or two right. and start doing ridiculous things like three-hour shows every week. Oh, God, no. Yeah, it, <laughs> it has to be a maximum of two hours. Absolutely, yeah. I think another thing, and this is more on Cody and the Bucks more than Tony, but Tony, I think, could be a part of this as well is there's a lot of good young talent out there. They got to push this young talent. They got to push them to the point where people are going to start recognizing them. And if they're able to do that, and I think they're capable of very well doing that, then my God, you know, we could be looking at this next great generation of wrestling from this organization. You're absolutely right. You have a lot of young talent out there that are thirsty, uh, not only to succeed in wrestling, you know, passionate about this industry, but a lot of them also are being kind of held back in a way where um, WWE, for example, we keep bringing them up because of Cody, you know, Mm -hmm. and Jericho, but everything's so micromanaged by a group of people mostly that never really watched wrestling in the first place. Right. And then you got the uh, chief Poncho, who is such a control freak, has to micromanage everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and with Cody and all them and Jericho, Jericho has repeatedly been online on his podcast talking about how he has clashed with uh, Triple H and Vince, so Vince on numerous occasions about creative development, control, you know. And I think that we're finally going to, quote-unquote, from Stone Cold Steve Austin, give the business back to the boys. Mm -hmm. Because that's partially what, you know, I'm not going to go back into it, but that's partially what pissed off Stone Cold to the point where he walked out. Right. Yeah. And I think, because there was something that happened that the the night – with SmackDown, and I'm not sure if you had read about 
this or heard about this. Because the, the SmackDown episode was in Jacksonville. So it wasn't ironic that the pep rally was held in the same place. <laughs> you know, it was it was very well planned. If you attempted to get into the arena for SmackDown, and you had on any, you know, merchandise, shirts, hat, whatever, all elite wrestling, they did not let you in. I read about a little bit about that. And to me, I think that's a bit of bitterness on the part of WWE. But at the same time, it's them trying not to let another promotion promote themselves on their show. There was a report about that, and that's the thing about WWE. They were kind of worried that they would start major AEW chants, you know. Yeah. And Which is weird because, you know, apparently Vince and Triple H were fine with Jericho signing on. It was a big deal, yeah. you know. Yeah. And but they, then again, you know, uh, well, go ahead. No, I was going to mention how, and I didn't even realize this. In the in the intro, you know when they do the then now forever opening, Jericho's no longer in the video. He got edited out. Yeah, they took him out. They took him <laughs> out. And they moved him to the alumni section on the website. <laughs> mm. yeah. You think there's a bit of bitterness over on Vince's part? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're probably like, okay, Chris, we'll let you go to Japan. Okay, Chris, we'll let you have your cruise. No, you can't go to another organization. Do you think <laughs> it's mainly because the organization is here in the same country and is really Vince kind of obviously sees it as a potential threat? I, you know? I would hope he sees it as a potential threat, but I think it's not going to be a potential threat right away. Well, for, it's going to take a while. It, yeah. it is. It's going to take two to three years. Once it, you know, if they're still successful in two to three years, then you have a serious threat. <laughs> With Tony and Cody working together, Cody was uh, brilliant with his character. I didn't really like it, the Stardust thing. Mm -hmm. But but because he wasn't able to do everything he wanted to do, he was still in that environment where he learned how not to do things. <laughs> That, you know, when it comes to organizing, producing not only a TV show, but also a wrestling show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that he grew a lot wiser from that experience. He was in WWE for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then especially when your brother is a professional wrestler and your dad is one of the smartest minds in the history of the business. Yep. You know, you, you're going to learn a lot of things. It really, it's going to be really hard for them to uh, not become successful with this. Yeah. You know, I just hope in the long run that they don't try and turn themselves into what WWE turned into. Mm -hmm. You know, where they shy away from the wrestling and they try and turn themselves into what WWE exploded into, which really isn't even the wrestling company anymore, as ironic as that is. You know, yeah. there's sports entertainment, soap opera, you know. Mm -hmm. my biggest concern is not on the part of the owner or the wrestlers it's the fans my my concern is that they watch all the lead and you know they get into it at first and then the minute they have one bad episode the minute they have one bad show people are going to be like ah I can't watch them anymore. I'm leaving. I can't watch them anymore. That's my big concern. That and that the thing is that happens quite a bit. There's a lot of critics out there, you know, where they uh, maybe they're setting the maybe they have expectations that are a bit too high for this, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know exactly what to expect from AEW other than to bring back uh, actual, you know, the the good matches, the interesting storylines and characters storylines that are like consistent <laughs> yeah. you know mm -hmm. 
So I'm pretty sure that there are going to be a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, but there are going to be enough. There's going to be some backlash once they do produce a less than stellar show. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same token, who cares? Exactly. They're still going to keep doing it. Yeah, they're going to keep doing it. And there's one other thing we haven't brought up. Mm -hmm. Kenny Omega. He becomes a free Free. agent at the end of this month. I've read rumors that he's going to All Elite. Of course, they're rumors. Rumors from very reliable sources. (laughs) I mean, the the number, because I don't know if you've read the number that Vince offered Kenny Omega. I heard it was in the millions, right? Like twenty million. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Oh yeah, they they offer like they offered him a buttload of money. He could have a championship run. He can do his own video game show like Xavier Woods does because they're they're good friends. Let him have creative control, which is what you like. You brought up Steve. They don't do a lot of in WWE. They were going to basically give him the kingdom. And Kenny, we haven't heard much from Kenny, but from what I've read, he's not going to WWE. But we could be wrong. It it really would be kind of out of character for him to join the WWE. Mm -hmm. Was he also, does his contract include like a six-month window where if he's not satisfied with the way it's going during the first six months, he would be allowed to leave? I have I haven't heard that part. Okay. Now that would be interesting. <laughs> he goes in first day, something happened, and he's like, "Yeah, this isn't gonna work. I'm leaving." <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I hate to say it, but unless um, Vince drops dead, you know, and I don't, you know, I, I'm not gonna get into that. It's a bad thing, you know. Yeah. But unless he drops dead and Triple H takes over. Uh, I would not be surprised if somehow within those six months or first year, they're going to piss him off, you know. Mm-hmm. But then again, look at how they treated AJ Styles. You know, uh, AJ hasn't had exactly the greatest run, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But he has spent most of his time in the WWE as the, the world champion. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he's pretty much been in major big feuds the entire time, for the right. most part. But Kenny Omega is being offered an opportunity with a new organization, with friends that he's worked with for a while, mm-hmm. to build something so big that even if you know he turns down the twenty million, you know who knows AEW could end up making hundreds of millions of dollars, and he'd still be extraordinarily wealthy. Oh yeah. I... What's more interesting, you know, the immediate money or being a part of something? And you know we can't, they're probably gonna make Kenny if they if he signs with the AEW they're gonna probably make him, you know, the poster boy for all the major shows. He's oh, gonna be main yeah. main eventing all the events, mm-hmm. and rightfully so. He is a brilliant, amazing wrestler. Oh God, yeah. I mean, the match that he had recently at Wrestle Kingdom proves the point of how great of a storyteller he is. He's right. just that good of a wrestler. I would, I, I would think if I had, you know, if I was Kenny, I'd rather be with my friends. I mean, I know Kenny wants to be in a WrestleMania, but would you rather do something that you want to do and be, you know, in a foul mood, or would you rather be with your best friends? I was thinking, you know, that uh, I read the read that he wanted to do WrestleMania with AJ Styles, right? That'd be a hell of a match. And uh, I was thinking, you know, maybe he could sign a like a four month contract with WWE just to last through WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and they could do their thing. Or AJ Styles has AJ Styles signed a new contract yet? No, not yet. Wouldn't it be something if AJ Styles left WWE for AEW? It it could very well happen. It He's... could very well happen. <laughs> He said repeatedly, uh, he's told a lot of people that he's at the time of his life where, you know, he still loves wrestling, but he doesn't want that schedule anymore. Yeah. 
which is exactly what AEW could offer them. Exactly, and that's one of the things they said was they're gonna they're gonna give everyone a reasonable schedule, you know, where they're probably not gonna be on the road three hundred days a year. I mean, why not? No, and not only that, but it seems like they're structuring. Uh, they're trying to create a structure where you don't have to be killing yourself night in and night out for uh, for year after year after year. Mm-hmm. And even though Randy Orton's been on a you know a lighter schedule, John Cena's hardly ever there anymore. Right. You know, there's not much that Vince can offer him that AEW can't. Yeah. That's very so, true. Besides the respect, and because I honestly don't think Vince has much respect for them. It's you know, the threat, the growing threat in the AEW. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I seriously doubt it was a fence. Well, I may be wrong, but I kind of doubt it was a fence that was be responsible for AJ's run. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe when he heard that pop a few years ago at the Royal Rumble and realized, oh, shit, I got something <laughs> here, you know? Yep. And that was one of those people popping like a mini at too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, but Kenny doing the AEW thing. Hopefully, we'll find out soon enough. He, it's ultimately up to him, but he's yeah. still going to make a hell of a lot of money. And have you read more about what's going on with him? He's been kind of quiet. Yeah, he he's pretty much been quiet since Wrestle Kingdom. He has not. He was not on their show the day after. He hasn't said anything. And the next time we hear him is probably going to be the day that we find out if he's going to WWE or if he's going to AEW. What is your money? If you had to bet money on that, where do you think he's going to go? If I was a gambling man, which I'm not, except if I'm at the racetrack, but that's not very often. But anyway, (laughs) uh, if I was a gambling man, I'd put my money on AEW. Me too. AJ Styles as well. Do you think Shins- uh, Shinsuke Nakamura is going to go to AEW? Ooh. Now, that's, that's a good question. Because I've read, like, he he's enjoying at WWE. Like, he's enjoying where he's at right now. He might stay there. Although the door with New Japan is always open. I don't know. Um... I also know that Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, their contracts with Impact are coming up soon. So, I've never heard of them, to be honest with you. Oh, you got to watch them. They are really, really good. Um, I've heard them. I've heard Okada. His contract's coming up shortly. Um, Naito, his contract's probably coming up. There's a lot of interesting names that are going to be uh, making some big decisions real soon. It seems like we're kind of finally on our, uh, the reckoning uh, that I've uh, – I know it's kind of naive, you know, mm-hmm. but I never thought this would happen, you know. The idea that another a billionaire like Ted Turner comes along and starts his own thing like this where not only is he – passionate about the sport but he's not a complete control freak and a-hole right. you know right. where he's going to be demanding uh, and a structure that is similar to Vince you know and you know and this is something that I've developed the last couple of years like thinking back about Ted Turner <laughs> he's more of like one of the I, and, and I know we make fun of Ted Turner, and, you know, he deserves it, but he's sort of an underrated, you know, icon of the business, if you think about it. Because if, 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 if he did not let, and this is a little bit of a history lesson, if he didn't let Georgia Championship Wrestling on TBS, who knows where that station is today? Because it was like wrestling was the highest rating rated show every week for years on that station. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 
Like, I always heard it was that and the Andy Griffith show were the top two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back to today. Today's wrestling, not 30 years ago. But still, um, <laughs> no, there's, there's just a lot of intrigue. And I think that's what we need right now is intrigue. Because New Japan, you know, they're doing great. They're doing their thing. But they don't offer a weekly TV no. show. Well, they do, but it's not like WCW where it's like a live show. And if you have access, it's from like one of the shows they did. So it's like a tape to, if you understand where I'm coming from. Right. I didn't know that. Okay. If, if you have Access TV, they're on every Friday at 8. or se- Well, 7, your time. Um, and then Ring of Honor, and, and I love Ring of Honor, but it's like you have to find the station they're on, and if you can't find it, you have to watch it online, like the following Monday. And then Impact, like I said, they went to a channel that basically no one has ever heard of. I didn't even hear of it when they broke the news. So there's there's a lot. There's a lot that's riding on, you know, the TV contract, basically everything. Is it mainly because uh, a lot of networks are not going to risk putting these types of uh, organizations on the primetime slot? Unless that they, you know, have the financial backing for it, you know. That's a good question. Because with TNT primetime, I've heard a few different stories, but if they go on T- TNT, it's going to be on Tuesday, right? I would think so because they have they have original programming, right? Um, and if they were to go to TBS. They could take a day because, like, their nighttime until they get to Conan O'Brien are just repeats of Family Guy and Big Bang Theory for the most part. So. Do you think that uh, with the current landscape of online streaming, they're also going to try and reach a deal with any of the online streaming services? I don't see why not, honestly. I mean – it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because more and more people are dropping, you know, cable for, you know, the streaming services, and it wouldn't be a bad idea. But if you look at all these NFL games, uh, basketball and everything, those games, they still get huge ratings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they, the people still watch TV, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, TV's not dying. You know, yeah. <laughs> for, for those who are worried, no, TV is not dying. It's just that a lot of people who followed WWE back in the day and WCW, uh, you know, NJPW, ROH, mm-hmm. Impact, they're not given primetime slots on major networks that are easy to follow and keep track of. You right. know, this is the first time uh, we've ever had that now, uh, ever since the big buyout you mm-hmm. know well whatever's gonna happen it's going to be an adventure and i think we as fans should embrace that as, as far as the production goes on the show do you think they're going to kind of try and take a uh a page out of uh wwe's book with the big titan shrons the pyros fireworks and all that stuff or th- are they going to kind of create their own thing maybe the pyro but it wouldn't be like enormous like the Not pyro like the pyro they used at the pep rally with the exception of the very end where the fireworks were coming out of the stadium really wasn't that much so uh, maybe they'll create their own i'm not sure that's a good question steve i i didn't even think of it I, I'm kind of interested, you know, in the production aspects of the show. And uh, our friend Ted, 
uh, I would know a lot more about that than you know I would. Yeah. You know, I don't know about you. Yeah. So that would be a question we can ask him. <laughs> I, I would think the same thing. Maybe maybe I'll ask him in the future. But uh, is there anything with, with AEW that we really haven't brought up that, that uh, is also kind of intriguing? Um. Uh, hmm. Well, the fact that they don't have a website right now, I have not seen a website. I don't think they're really going to come out with the website until uh, maybe we get closer to double or nothing. Yeah. After every, everything has been more kind of established, because where are they going to put on it right now? You know. Yeah, that, that's very true. I mean, they have a Twitter, they have a, you know, they have a Twitter, they have a Facebook, and that's really about it. That's all they really need right now. Indeed. And do you think that they're going to have monthly pay per views? Ooh. I would hope not because that's what's making like when I watch the Ring of Honor pay-per-views and recently the Impact pay-per-views that much more special mm-hmm. is that they're not every month. Like mm-hmm. if I was in charge and if I, you know, if I had the run of a multi-billion dollar company, I would limit my pay-per-views to four or five a year. Instead of running one or two every month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) When there's really no – you don't even have enough content to, you know, justify it. But that's what (laughs) makes TakeOver so special. That's why every TakeOver is such a big hit is because they're not every month. They only do them four or five times a year. And it's usually during a major wrestling weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hope they don't do every month. I really do. Do you think that they are – what kind of schedule do you think that they're going to uh, set up for all their wrestlers? Ooh. You know, I was thinking about that earlier while we were talking. They could do – what WWE did before they did Raw every week live, which would be do your live show on whatever day, go to the next town the next day, record that episode, and then give the give the guys like three, four days off, do a weekend show, then give them the rest of the week off and then go back on a Friday, Saturday, do some shows and then do a live episode there, you know. I think I read a report that they're going to try and do a live show every week. Mm, maybe, maybe that would work. Just, just give them a light schedule on that. Maybe do two house shows, then a live show, and then give them like three, four days off and do the same thing over again. How many uh, house shows do you think they're going to try and work towards the frequency of them? Maybe not that much. They might focus mainly on it just for TV, which would be very interesting if they did. Back in the mid '90s, uh, I think I remember reading Eric Bischoff's book, but uh, which really is very questionable how accurate that is. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I love Eric Bischoff, man. But I've read the book, I've seen his podcast, and his stories are not consistent at all. Yeah, yeah. do you think that the, they're going to kind of limit the uh, the house shows to only maybe two or three times a month or so, or are they even going to do them at all? That. That's another, oh my God, you're bringing up these million dollar questions. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't do a house show for like the first couple years. I'm thinking kind of like bigger picture, like is that, what what are they, what is their goal of turning this into? Yeah. You know? And maybe, you know, obviously we're really excited about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're asking questions that I don't even think Tony's been able to figure out yet. Right. But I think... <laughs> But I think that the best thing about AEW was what was said during the pep rally was it doesn't matter what 
gender you are, what race you are, what religion you are, what belief you have, we will hire you as long as you're elite. It's like basically they're saying we don't care if you're, you know, eight foot two or if you're four foot one. If you are elite, we want you. You have the charisma, the personality, and the athleticism. Not you don't, I mean, you don't have to be like um, a prototype of John Cena or Randy exactly. Orton in, in that you know specific you know, criteria. But if you have everything needed to have that itch factor, I think that they're uh, I think they're going to really do a lot of great things with a lot of the talent out there, where they're going to rejuvenate a lot of people that are probably pretty frustrated with the current landscape of yes they are making good money i guess they do care about being on tv but they're working for a company that doesn't have the hosting of a major television network yeah. or you're not working with a crazy 75 year old man who is so out of touch basically they're just saying just be you don't don't be somebody you're not just be you and that's really what most successful wrestlers uh, have been able to, well, that's how they've been able to succeed. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh God, yeah. Look at Jericho. Yes. He, with his personality, he was able to get a clipboard over. <laughs> over, yes. I mean, when we do real quick, to sort of stay with the clipboard, when uh, we, when me and my nephews, we do the. Uh, package videos of one of them i think it's that wrestling club i'm i yeah i think it is that wrestling club when they have like the little pamphlet it's in the style of chris jericho's clipboard <laughs> so it's like the list of whatever month <laughs> it's like so good because it's still over so that originally was supposed to be kind of a heel thing you know to, to piss people off and mm-hmm. <laughs> it turned him into a massive baby face for a little while, you know? It was, yeah. Um, bet... Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, I was – well, no, I was going to say if you had um, anything else you wanted to bring up because we've touched on a lot of – oh, actually, no, you know what? Real quick, let's talk mm-hmm. about the women's division. Okay. Because we didn't talk about them, and if we didn't, I think some of – some of our listeners might find a sexist, but who cares? Um, <laughs> where do you think they're going to find the talent? Because I don't think they're going to get it from WWE. They're not going to get it from Impact. They're not going to get it from Ring of Honor. I don't know where they're going to find the talent. Do you? I really don't know, Matt. Yeah. Because the only place I could think of would be like Shimmer, because they're still around. Shimmer, I never even heard of them. Really? Oh, wow. Hey, I'm not sexist, guys. I'm just... No, yeah. <laughs> no, but they've been around a long time, and that's an all-women's promotion. They might go to that and find, you know, places, other, you know, indie wrestling promotions that does women's wrestling. That's going to probably be where they go. Why do you think that the, the, the women in the WWE would not go over there? I'm not saying that they wouldn't go over. I just, just not optimistic. <laughs> yeah, like right now, the te- like their contracts. Like I don't know of anyone who, you know, is like close to the end. And I think if anyone were to go and get over, obviously Becky would be the first one. And then I would think somebody maybe like a Bailey, or even a Naomi because she's athletic could get over. I'm actually looking uh, looking that up right now to see if there is anything out there because I don't think really there's been much talk about a lot many of the women coming yeah. over there. I would love for it, you know, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because at, remember at All In, they had that really good four-way match, um, which is the one that Britt Baker was in, which I think got her the contract. With all elite, but I mean, you had Tessa Blanchard, who's an impact. You had Madison Rain, who's in Ring of Honor. 
You got Chelsea Green, who is in NXT right now. You you got good talent. They just got to find them. And I think once they do, that women's division is going to be good. Do you think it might be a possibility that with the money that AEW is backed by, they will buy out the contracts that any of these women are tied to for WWE? Ooh. That would be a first. Wow. That would. I, I don't I don't know. I think that would be very – that would be a brave move on their <laughs> part, and that might also be a death wish. <laughs> um, You know what? There's one more thing, and I just – I can't believe we even forgot to mention this. Titles. What are their ti- – like, what are the championships going to be? Are they going to be just, like, the AEW championship, the tag championship, and the women's championship, or are they going to create – you know, different championship. I That's something that never got brought up. Indeed. Uh, it's too early to tell. They it haven't is. really. Because we're still only within less than two weeks of any of these, uh, any of the specifics being announced. Mm-hmm. But they're probably kind of going to, well, I would like to hope that they have the cruiserweight division, tag team division, heavyweight championship division, Women's Championship, you know, have a solid division. Yeah, I think I think we'll get at least a heavyweight, a tag, and a women's. Uh, yeah, but, oh, that's an obvious one, you know. The bigger report was, you know, uh, like I brought up earlier, you know, Young Bucks are focused on tag team, Brandy's focused on the women, mm. and Cody's doing the singles roster, you know. Yeah. They also said that wins and losses are going to count, though. Yeah. I'd like to see how this turns out. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good thing or bad thing. Because I've seen some people arguing online, you know, about how, like, uh, his sports competition mindset with football, how, how he's going to bring that over to wrestling, you know, with the wins and losses. I mean, you, you could do it creatively. Like, if a guy like when it starts and he's like oh and four and they do something where it's like if you don't win this next match we're letting you go and then you could create a storyline out of that they they can do it creatively they just gotta do it the right way with the right person i think he may have also kind of uh touched on uh he didn't directly say it but he was kind of implying how what with, with wwe they are well known for having the shadiest, stupidest finishes. Mm-hmm. You know, disqualification, double countouts, disqualifications. You know, for stories and feuds that have really actually garnered attention and got people interested. Mm-hmm. You know, and at the end of the match, it's like, really, that's it. You know, so well, at least shall- we won't have to worry about that. <laughs> Hopefully not. You know, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I think that uh, unless you have something else, I think that we've kind of touched on everything we can with, you know, as I, much or little as information as we got right now. I, I think we've pretty much gotten into everything for this time around. Um, is there any way that our listeners could follow you, Steve? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? I'm on Facebook, uh, but I'm not really on social media a whole lot, you know. Uh, me and you met on Facebook over the uh, the, the wrestling group. We you have, know? yep. And have we, have we done fantasy sports yet? No, we haven't. I think we're going to have to do that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see what happens. All right. All right. <laughs> well, Steve, I think it's safe to say that we'll have to do this again in the near future. Uh, and I did want to say one thing before mm-hmm. we go. I want to, anyone who listens to this podcast who's also on the groups and stuff, give us feedback on it. You know, yes. let us know if uh, we didn't talk about something or overlook something. You know, that way, you know, we can kind of create a bullet point because I want to do this again. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to do this again. <laughs> I really do. Steve, thank you for coming up with the idea. Thank you for doing this. This has been long overdue. It really has. 
Yes, yes, it has. But hey, timing, you know, this is a good time to do it. <laughs> yeah, it is. I right, thank you guys for listening to this special, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you, everyone.